This is the terminology that you need to know for bank rules. One is when you create a new bank rule, it will say money in or money out. Your bank rules cannot be for both. So they're either bank rules for deposits or or payments to a credit card or uh, money out, which are bank debits, checks, wire transfers, or credit card expenses. So the, 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 the rules can only be created for either or, either money in or money out, right? So you have to don't know that. The other piece is I'll give you a couple of conditions, right? The conditions um, would be, look, if, if all five of these are in place, then make it this, uh, or if any of these are in place, then make it that. You can create one condition, you can create up to five conditions. You don't have to create more than one. And then you can also do uh, things with amounts. So I'll, I'll give you some examples with amounts that will that will make a lot of sense. So, um, so if you have a transaction that's under $100, you can make it one thing. If it's under a different, uh, you can make it a different thing. That's pretty much what it means, okay? Um, the other, just to get a little bit more detail into this is when we actually create a money out rule, money out, we can only make that transaction an expense a check or a transfer. That's what QuickBooks calls it, expense, check, or transfer. And when they're money in, they can either be a deposit, a credit card credit, uh, if it's money coming into a credit card, or a transfer. So a transfer can be the default ac- account for any of these rules. But like I said, again, before, and I'll say it again, I avoid transfers no matter what. Then you also have to select the payee, which either be the vendor that you're paying or the customer that's paying you. Uh, the account, which is you know the category or the account in the chart of accounts. You can pre-build a class or a location in your bank rules as well. And if you put anything on the memo, it's going to override the bank memo. So I actually like to always leave the memo blank to allow the bank to bring in its own natural memo in it. So I never put, ever put text in the um, in the bank rules memo. Leave it blank always so, I, so the actual real memo from the bank comes along. And there's one little checkbox uh, that's a game changer, which is add to my books immediately, no need to approve, which basically means uh, whenever you see this uh, rule uh, get engaged, apply it automatically, put the transaction into the check register, put it in QuickBooks, don't even ask me about it. I don't even need to think about it. Just do it automatically before I even notice. Okay, so that's the last one and we're gonna explore that one as well. And the last piece on bank rules before we go into an in-depth demo on it, is you can actually export the bank rules to another QuickBooks Online file. So if you got a really, really good QuickBooks Online company with a really good set of bank rules, um, you can export it and import it into a new file and then take advantage of some of that you know, data entry automation on the other company file. The, only, the challenge that you have is that the vendor names and the accounts don't transfer so if you have a different chart of accounts in another company file where you're bringing the rules, you know none of these things are going to map, so you're going to have to map it manually. And if you don't have the same vendor list, you're going to have the same situation. So you may also want to transfer the vendors and the accounts to the new QuickBooks file if you're also going to bring in uh, rules in the uh, export-import uh, process. Okay, so let's go back to demo here. Demo mode, okay. And let's use, uh, let's continue to be working on this credit card. And let's look at uh, some of the things that are in here. So I'm gonna click on bank detail, which is gonna help me uh, see them grouped. Cause I think it makes the most sense when you're, when you're seeing them grouped. So you see all these American airlines here. There's a couple of ways to create a rule for American airlines. So these four here are American airlines. So one of the ways to do it is to go to bank rules, go to a new rule, and then we'll put here, look, if we're gonna call this rule American Airlines. Typically on the rule name will also be the vendor's name. So I copy that because I'm gonna create the vendor later on. On their bank text, as long as it says American Air, okay, that's good enough because American Airlines sometimes truncates the name of their, uh, of their, uh, of their payee in, in the bank. Then I'm gonna make it into the payee American Airlines. So I'm gonna create that as a new vendor. And then I'm gonna put that under travel. And I have airfare. Okay, so I have an account for it, travel and airfare. Memo, I'm gonna leave it out and I'm not gonna check um, automatically add to QuickBooks for now, just so we can kind of watch the process. So I'm gonna click on um, 
I'm like, here, you see here, it says all bank accounts. You can also choose which bank account you want that, that rule to apply to. So wh where this matters is, let's say, for example, that you have a client that has two credit cards. On one credit card, if they go to the supermarket, it's a business expense. On the other credit card, if they go to the supermarket, that's like the spouse buying for the house, that's a personal expense. So you can create rules that are that level of uh, discriminative. So I'm gonna click on save. Okay, so there's my rule. My rule is set up here. I'm gonna go back into banking and go down to American Airlines. I notice that now all these have been uh, changed by the rules. This is what we were trying to do earlier with the uh, with the transfers that some for some reason didn't come in. But notice that now it says rule. So it's green as well, but it says rule. It says that I, QuickBooks is classifying this based on explicit instructions. So I can click, I can uh, go click on add on each one, add, 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 or I can batch, uh, bring them in. Let's take a look at this one called Anthony's Call Fired Pizza. So let's say for example, that a client tells you, look, Anytime that I go to a restaurant and I pay more than $100, that's going to be business. And every time I go to a restaurant and I pay less than $100, that's going to be uh, personal. So let's say for this particular restaurant, that applies. So notice that you got two transactions that are, um, that are under 100 and one over 100. So you're going to see how cool this is when we create the rule. So I'm going to start with uh, the one that's 100, and then I'm going to click on create rule from this transaction. So I can do it straight from here, which is great. So I do create rule from this transaction and I must've clicked on the wrong one. Give me a second. Let's open Anthony's again and go to create rule from this transaction. There it is. And then I'm gonna copy the vendor's name up here. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna say meets any of these conditions and I'm gonna remove the first two for a second just so we see bank text. So as long as this text is here, that's gonna classify them automatically. We're gonna make this an expense. I'm gonna create the payee, hit save, and then I'm gonna put this under meals for clients and events. So that was the, the, the concept was, if it was over 100, it will be meals for clients and events. If it's under, it's a personal expense of some sort, okay? On the memo, I'm gonna remove it, because again, I want uh, that memo to come naturally from the, each transaction. Then I'm gonna click on save. Now, I didn't do the condition of the dollar amounts, so right now, all three of these are being classified as meals for clients and events. So I'm gonna go and edit that rule. So go to bank rule and edit the rule. So I'm gonna click on that edit button on the right side. And then I'm gonna add one more condition. I'm gonna say all these conditions must apply. I'm gonna click on add line. And then I'm gonna say amount is greater than 99.99. Okay, because that's what they told me. They told me if it's more than $100, you're gonna make it this expense category. So I'm gonna click on save. And then I'm gonna take this same rule and I'm gonna hit the drop down menu and click on copy. Okay. And we're gonna call this one under 100. So I added uh, basically some text to the bank rule. And then on the amount, I'm gonna say is less than 100. And now that it's less than 100, I'm gonna keep the same vendor because it's the same vendor, but then this one's gonna be a personal personal uh, expense of some sort, right? So let's put that under restaurants, personal expense, okay? So I got a category called restaurants, personal expense, um, just for that. So I created it's my own set of uh, owner distribution, personal expense accounts. And uh, you're gonna see that with both rules come into play, we got two rules in there one for over 100 and the other one for under 100. I'm gonna go back to banking and I should see two of the transactions go one way and the other one go a different way. Yeah, exactly as expected. So notice that my, my two transactions that were under 100 went to personal and my one transaction that was over 100 went to meal. So that's actually awesome, it's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna click and hold shift and then batch actions and accept them all. Cool, let's do a couple more rules so we can see a couple of other examples. There's some really great examples. So let's say for example, that Best Buy. Every time I go to Best Buy, I wanna make that office supplies. I don't even wanna think about it.